I asked him if he's going to sing another song. He said he's going to sing it. When I got through, I said, well, that might be midnight. <laughs> but I kind of doubt it, though. <laughs> I kind of doubt it. <laughs> but uh, I do take up a lot of the brother's time, though. Uh, I, I, I probably take up more than any of the other ones. But uh, I want to do what he wants me to do. But... Uh, most of the songs tonight that we've been singing, you notice the word God in there. And I started on this a couple weeks ago. And we got we got to go to Florida, <clears throat> Joe's brother. And uh, so I, I, I kind of finished a little bit when uh, we got back. And, uh, but... Uh, what I want to talk about tonight is God. And that's why we're here, is to ring out His name and to uplift His name. To realize that there is a God. A lot of people today don't believe in God. They believe in evolution or everything else that there is under the sun other than God. They put everything else before God. You know, they... Of course, he has a lot of names <clears throat> that he goes by, and uh, but a lot of people say, you know, do you ever hear anybody ask, who is God? And does God exist? Where did he come from? And what does he look like? Well, the Bible says that in the beginning, God, as it begins, He was before time, and He will always be in existence. It does not say what He looks like about His physical appearance. In Exodus 33 and 20, He was talking to Moses, and He, and he said, No man shall see my face and live. Moses wanted to see God's glory. And this is what Moses, God told Moses in Exodus. He said, and God tells Moses that he will put him in a cliff and cover him with his hand. And just imagine him in a cliff and how big God's hand is to cover Moses. To where Moses can't see him. As he passed by, God let him see it's back. <laughs> That's as close as anybody has ever gotten to see what God looks like. When God put Moses in that cliff and he hid him by his hand. Because Moses wanted to see what God looked like. The Bible tells us that God is a spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. In Exodus 3 and 14, God tells Moses, I am that I am. That's how he describes himself. And in Revelation, he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning in the end, the first and the last. He created everything. Just look around us. We can, we can see God in everything that we touch. You get up in the morning. The breath you breathe. God gives you that. Now there are many gods, but there is only one true God. And that's God Almighty. In Romans chapter 11, I can find it. Starting with verse 33. He says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom 
and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For him, and through him, and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. And in John, 1 John 1 and 5, Says this then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. You know, he spoke and the stars appeared in the universe. He holds all power. He controls everything. Life, nature, politics, evil. God created evil. He puts in power who he wants in power. He tears down kings. He raises up kings. God is in control. Amen. You see, he made all things, he made all these things, and he even formed man. In Genesis 1, 26-27, he formed man out of the dust of the earth, and breathed the breath of life in him, and he became a living soul. That's what you and I are today. We are a living soul. Just as he breathed breath into Adam when he formed him out of the dust of the earth. You and I are a living soul just like Adam. No other being can do these things and he is also our savior and king because he loved us so much that he sent his son to die for our sins. God is declaring that men everywhere repent in Acts chapter 17, 29 through 31, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's almighty, he's powerful, he's controlling, he's jealous, long-suffering, and loving, and he is vengeful. He'll let you do anything you want to do. But you've got to pay a price for that at the end of time. Psalms 33 says, tell us, tells us of his handiwork. It says, let us stand in awe of him. Do we stand in awe of God today? Of all that he does for us? Or do we take everything that he does for granted? Instead of giving him glory. You need to accept Jesus Christ today as your Savior if you don't know him. And find out who the true God is. The one that created everything. The one that sent his only begotten son to die on that cross. For your sins and mine. That's what Jim brings me.